Well, as you can imagine, four weeks into the NFL season, there's a lot to talk about and always excited whenever we can get to Rodney Harrison with us on our Village Inn hotline here on Sports Talk. And Rodney, uh, first off, crazy game last night, crazy ending, but uh, you know, controversy aside, the Detroit Lions were in position. Now, instead, another tough defeat. And, you know, if you're a team like the Lions, uh, how do you come back from that and try to salvage your season in, in that division? Well, I mean, obviously, you got to continue to play hard and fight, but I think that was devastating to their season. Another loss, um, you know, you look in within their division, Green Bay looks unbeatable. They look very unbeatable. You look at Minnesota, even though they lost to Denver, they look like they're, you know, much improved. And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't fear much from the Chicago Bears, um, but I think that's a devastating loss, and I think that loss eventually took them out of the playoffs. Rodney, the Dallas Cowboys keep hitting injury after injury after injury. Do you think they're, they're going to be able to still find a way to win the NFC East? Man, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, you look at the Giants, and, you know, we always pay attention to their offense, and Odell Beckham and Eli Manning, but the defense played a lot better against um, Buffalo, even though they were missing two starters on the offensive side of the ball. And I think the Giants are really starting to gain confidence. You know, Tony Dungy always looks to me, and he says, hey, Rodney, the Giants are going to win because they have the best quarterback within that division. But, you know, I, I don't think Brandon Wheaton did anything to lose in the game. My concern is on the defensive side of the ball. Everyone talks about the improvement. But without Sean Lee, that defense looked completely confused. You saw a lot of miscommunication. You saw guys confused on where to line up. And I think Brad Marinelli, he's done a good job of bringing a certain mentality to the defense. But if you can't stop people in the fourth quarter when it counts, especially in this division where it might only take eight or nine wins to win the division, it's going to be tough to win this division. You get Rolando McLean back. You get Greg Hardy back. And even if Sean Lee's going to miss some time with the concussion, those are our two impact players on defense. Do you think they can, uh, by, you know, with their additions, really help us shore that defense up? Yeah, and I think that's a huge improvement. But then the X factor is those guys have proven. We know they can play. But the X factor is, well, how will Brandon Whedon continue to play? You know, you hold your breath every time he drops back, he passes the ball, whether it's a bootleg, whether it's a play action, you always hold your breath if you're Dallas Cowboys fan. So you know you're going to get a certain level of production from those defensive players, but Brandon Whedon becomes the X factor, and you hope not to have any more injuries. So it's going to be tough for the Dallas Cowboys, man. you, you got to be able to stop people on the defensive side of the ball. I think they will be improved. I think they will get a spark because these guys are coming back. But Sean Lee, man, if they, can, if they can keep him healthy, this defense goes to the next level, and you no longer see the confusion that we see each and every week without him. Rodney Harrison with us right now on our Village Inn Hotline here as Sports Talk continues. Well, you mentioned the Giants earlier. Now, as bad as things are in Philly with the Eagles, and Chip Kelly is quickly wearing out his welcome, uh, there's still just a game back, and that's the crazy thing right now. If they can ever find a way to, to right the ship, Rodney, all of a sudden, the Eagles are still in this thing. Yeah, man, that's, that's the, the funny part about it, because, you know, despite how horrible they look, they're, they're still in it, and that's the beautiful thing about this division, and that's what Chip Kelly is preaching to his team. The biggest difference is this with the Eagles. You know, I, I know they brought in whoever they brought. They let a couple guards go or whatever, but the offensive line has been their mainstay. It's really been a strength of this team, and it's become the sole weakness of the team. And it's unfortunate because you have Sam Bradford, a guy that's learning a new offense, a new scheme, and now he looks very vulnerable. He looks scared back there. He doesn't play with a lot of confidence, and you have talent across the board, but we know that talent alone isn't good enough to win in this league, so Chip Kelly's going to have to do something. I know DeMarco Murray came out and expressed his frustration with not getting the ball as much, but Chip Kelly's basically said to himself, like, I can give you the ball 40 times, but if you're getting hit in the backfield every time I give you the ball, we don't have much of a chance. So I understand his frustration, but at the same time, this is when Chip Kelly gets paid the type of money that he gets paid. He has to convince these guys or show these guys a different way of doing things up front on the offensive line because it's just not happening for them. Rodney, what is going on with the San Francisco 49ers and Colin Kaepernick? How long do you think they'll stay with him at the quarterback position? I mean, he seems to be regressing every single game. Yeah, he's, he's getting worse, and, and he's lost complete confidence. I mean, when I go back and watch the tape, and I was watching it while I was on the plane yesterday, and I couldn't believe it. I'm yelling and screaming, and people looking at me in the aisle like, what the heck is wrong with him? <laughs> well, the problem with me was 
How do you miss a five-yard completion? How do you miss a check down? How do you miss these easy p- passes that he's missing? And to me, that's a sign that not only does he have terrible fundamentals and technique, but he's lost his confidence. And it's not like he has – I mean, he's got some decent players around. Equan Bowden is a more than capable guy. We've seen him when he's got a good quarterback that he can be productive. Vernon Davis and Torrey Smith, you know, and Carlos Hyde. But, man, he's totally, totally lost. And people say, well, go back to make, making sure that he runs the read option, something that he's more comfortable with. Well, he's going to get killed re- doing a read option. So I think this is the year where they see how he adjusts. And, and, and basically, he's going to have to forget about the first three or four weeks of the season, and he's going to have to say, and they're going to look at him and say, okay, we're going to judge you based on what you do now, how you handle adversity, how you play in the national stage. And if he can't change it, they're going to get rid of him, man. Just like they did in Miami with Joe Philbin, and now you've got a guy in, in Dan Campbell who wasn't that long ago he was playing in the league, and now all of a sudden he's uh, you know taking over this Dolphins team that also is in disarray after four weeks. Yeah, fresh new perspective, and Joe Philbin, this team is too talented of a team to come out and play. And the thing that stands out to me is the lack of passion that this team had. You know, and you got guys that love to play football there. You know, you got Dominic and Sue. I know the he just didn't sign a contract and completely shut it down. Cameron Wake is a guy that loves football. Charles Clay loves football. Jarvis Landry loves football. They got talent across the board, and Joe Philbin was not the right guy for this job. Last year, he was average within the division. If you want to compete with the Patriots, you got to be able to win divisional games. you got to be able to come and compete every single week. And his team did not show that. And when I look at Dominic and Sue, and this is the reason why I'm not a big fan of pan defensive tackles, whether it's Mar- Marcel Darius, whether it's Albert Hainsworth, um, and Dominic and Sue, because these guys, no matter where, how much you pay them, they're not going to make a difference if they you win the Super Bowl or not. J.J. Watt, and I love him to death. He's the best football player in the game. I think he's the best player in the game. Guess what? They're not going to win the Super Bowl with J.J. Watt, as, as disruptive as he is and as productive as he is. That's why I don't believe in this signing. But it's here now, and Dominic and Sue has to stand up. He has to be a man, stop being a small brat, and lead this team. That's why you pay him $100 million, not, not just that and production. Hey, Rodney, should we buy into the Cincinnati Bengals? They always look great in the regular season, but in the playoffs they have yet to win with Andy Dalton. I mean, is this the year you think they get it done? Um, it's, it's been four games. And, I, 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 you know, I like the Bengals and what they're doing, and I like the fact that, you know, Atkins is back. He looks a lot healthier now. He looks like he's, he's back to, you know, 2012 or so, Pro Bowl form, and I'm excited for him. In that sense, we look and we could argue and say they're, they're the most talented team in the league. But once again, I think it falls um, solely on Marvin Lewis's shoulders as well as Andy Dalton's shoulders. Can they get to that next level? And we don't know. I mean, it's, it's in four games. <laughs> we don't know. And, and, and every time I watch them, I say, okay, the Bengals won again. Okay, the Bengals won again. <laughs> if they're 10-0, guess what we're all going to say? Okay, they're 10-0. Let's see what happens the first game of the playoffs. So I think we're just going to have to kind of sit back and wait. You know, the one thing that stands out to me is I don't know how much leadership they have. I think they have a bunch of good players on that team, and they play well together, but I don't know who that one leader is, that one voice in the locker room when it comes playoff time, you know, who can get those guys going and who can get them to the next level. Rodney, always enjoy the conversation. Look forward to doing it again with you throughout the NFL season. Hey, no doubt, man. Good, good job. Thanks. Thanks, Rodney. I'll tell you right now, as we you know hear from Rodney Harrison talking yeah. about uh, Cincinnati, and you brought up a great point. Uh, you know they, they've kind of been pretenders in the postseason. There are a lot of undefeated teams still that all of a sudden look for real, but it's kind of scary that if Cincinnati could ever duplicate this regular season success in the playoffs, I mean that's a team that could go all the way. Yeah, for some reason they always look great in the regular season, but they, when it comes to the playoff times, it, it kind of, you know, Dalton actually reminds me of Romo when Romo couldn't win that first playoff game. They like the pressure was so high that he would just kind of choke in the playoff game. And you know, I like what Cincinnati's doing, but it's like every single year, oh, they look great in the regular season. They haven't done nothing in the in the playoffs, and we'll see what happens. But yeah. Man, good stories around the NFL as we continue here on this uh, Twitter Tuesday. Again, uh, cutting it off at 6 o'clock, getting you ready for uh, some wild card baseball. More of your phone calls, more of your tweets at 600 ESPN El Paso. We'll be back with plenty more Sports Talk with 600 ESPN El Paso.